I'm pretending to be a bohemian, sitting in a cafe, zipping along black and writing a screenplay. Isn't that what bohemians do? What is a bohemian anyway? The use of the term bohème for people living an unconventional life was popularized by the French writer Henri Muget in the mid-19th century. He wrote a series of stories about a group of young artists and writers living in Paris, which were published together as Scène de la vie de Bohème, or Scenes of Bohemian Life. At the time, gypsies were called bohemiens in France, as they were believed to have originated from Bohemia in the Czech lands. Like the gypsies, penniless young artists were frequently on the move. Mouget's Bohemians lived in the Latin Quarter, which was known for its cheap housing. Towards the end of the 19th century, Bohemians had moved to Montmartre, where the painter Toulouse-Lautrec liked to drink his absinthe. Mouget believed that Bohemia neither existed nor could exist anywhere but in Paris, but that is not true. In London, in the late 19th century, the Café Royal in Piccadilly was known for its Bohemian atmosphere. Unsurprisingly, it had been opened by a Frenchman. From 1908, the restaurant de la Tour Eiffel in 1 Percy Street in Fitzrovia became a major Bohemian haunt. Just around the corner in Charlotte Street was and is the Fitzroy Tavern, the home from home of the painter Nina Hamlet, the so-called Queen of Bohemia. Between 1948 and 1979, Muriel Belcher presided over the famous Colony Room in Dean Street. Sebastian Horsley, one of the members of this private club, called the colony a living work of art. Horsley might well have described himself. Aspiring to be an artist, Horsley covered large canvases with sunflowers or crucifixes, which he liked to paint wearing one of his paint suits. But his most accomplished work was probably his life. So was Horsley the archetypal or ideal bohemian? I think to be a bohemian you don't necessarily have to produce what is conventionally understood as a work of art. But you have to not primarily do what you do to gain money. The delight about Bohemia is it's a country without borders and a country that doesn't um, exist. And it, 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 it appears and it disappears and it moves. And it, it's really, it's, it's made up of the people. You don't really, really mind about you know, what, what drugs you take, about how much you drink or who you sleep with. You're not sort of constrained by societal norms. I mean, I always find it extraordinary that uh, at seven or eight in the morning you get on the tube and you're, oh, you have to have a hip flask or something and something to keep you awake and there's all these people who are going to work. It's ridiculous. I mean, I used to think, I used to imagine that you'd get on the, the bus or something at 6 or 7 in the morning, you'd look around and think, I didn't see any of you at the party. But it, it took me quite a long time to realise that these people were actually, that was when they got up. The straight Dr. Watson, allegedly a reader of Muget's work, believed Sherlock Holmes to have a bohemian soul, presumably because of his unconventional lifestyle. But Holmes treats his assignments like works of art, striving for perfection, without any interest in monetary gain. That makes home more of a bohemian than keeping odd hours as well as company and consuming drugs. You can probably still find the odd bohemian in Soho, but rising house prices have driven the cash poor away from the capital centre. Budget rents were and are often the reason why a particular area attracts the bohem. Artists need time to produce their work, and unless or until they make money from their art, they often have to survive on not very lucrative jobs. Bohemians make a place interesting, which then attracts higher earners, driving out the very poor people that made the area attractive. The ghetto is a model of two roads near London Fields Park in Hackney, made by photographer Tom Hunter and model maker James McKinnon. In the early 1980s, the then derelict houses were made into homes and workspaces by squatters, many of them artists. When the houses were threatened with demolition, Hanto lived there himself, wanted to document the community. The example shows how a space in London is made more desirable by artists living there and how it is eventually gentrified. I wonder, with London becoming more and more expensive, whether there's space for Bohemia anymore.